the now let me go to the section that uh, will talk about uh, fluid dynamics, which is the main components of this theoretical framework. As I just showed you that uh, in the second slide, there's a standard picture about the uh, heavy ion collision, which is multi-stage. So in order to describe all the dynamics in different stages, we need to uh, use different uh, frame theoretical model in different stages and link them together. So Jetscape is actually a very um, versatile and, univer uh, and a unified framework which can help us to, 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 to actually turn that standard picture into actual numerical simulations. So today I'll mostly focus on the lower part of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, workflow. So talk about the, the evolution of the bulk dynamics and the upper part will be actually discussed on Friday uh, by Goiko and uh, Yasuki about how to actually evolve uh, the color probe like jets, QCD jets through the medium and also how to interact with the medium. So today, uh, I was mostly interested in uh, talk about the lower uh, workflow, lower line of the workflow uh, from the initial density uh, productions to hydrodynamics and then to particleizations in, in terms of simulations. So in this uh, simulation of the bulk dynamics, we, the main uh, tool that we will use is called hydrodynamics. You can view it as a long wavelength effective uh, theory to describe uh, strongly interacting systems. It relies on two uh, basic rules in uh, basic ingredients, uh, which is uh, the conservation of energy and the momentum, and also uh, need to solve together with a, a given equation state to describe what is the underlying uh, matters in this uh, in this uh, in, in in the things you want to simulate. Um, so so classically, this uh, the 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 validity of hydrodynamics rely on a large separation of scale from microscopic lengths uh, versus the microscopic interactions. So the microscopic lengths of the system can be estimated as the one over the gradient of the pressures. Oh, sorry, over gradient of the velocities, and these uh, microscopic lengths. Uh, can be considered as the system size, and which needs to be much larger than the, the mean free path of the system, which is uh, described by the, uh, by the mean free path, which is described the, the microscopic interaction between particles. So hydrodynamics has been successfully applied to different types of systems. For example, on the left-hand side, for example, you want to uh, describe the dynamics of star formations. If you look at the length scale between the system size and the interaction size it actually differ by a all the magnitudes. So, so this, in this case, um, simulation of hydrodynamics works extremely well to describe the, the microscopic evolutions of the, of the systems. Uh, same thing apply for the, if you want to model the air dynamics of the race car in, in terms of our daily life. So, so the object is on, on the order of a few meters and the interaction between air molecules is about 10 to the minus seven. So, so with this uh, separation scales, hydrodynamics also works extremely well. For, for heavy ion collisions like coagulum plasma, the size of the systems can be estimated as the size of the nucleus, which is about 10 to the 14 meters. And if, you, if we estimate the microscopic interactions about uh, one over temperature, which is about 10 to the minus 16, in this case. So you see that the separations of the scale is not as large as the two other cases, but however, this is already enough for the hydrodynamics, hydrodynamics to be applied. Uh, and also we need to take account in addition to those other cases that in this case, we also expect that the viscosity or the energy moment dissipation will play a bigger role. So that that's one of the reasons where we also need to use viscous hydrodynamics to actually describe the, the, the dynamics of the coagulum plasmas. So, uh, so in terms of uh, conservation laws, if we trans in, translate them into mathematical equations, it's basically written in these two uh, current uh, equations. One is the uh, evolution of the energy moment conservations, d mu t mu nu equals zero, and the other is the conservation of the uh, ele of the conserved charge. So, so basically, when you solve these two partial differential equations, me. Uh, you will get hydrodynamics. Yes. Yeah, it, excuse me. I have a question. Just, uh, you know, uh, for the last slides, just uh, the hydrodynamic. Just, I just want to make sure. 
in the PP coins, as your suggestion, can we use the hydrodynamics for the mean free parts? So it is. Just it is. It is a very. It is a very, uh, currently a very hot topic with the hydrodynamics applied to PP collisions, and also this yeah. is a kind of so-called classical view of hydrodynamics where you require these large separation scales. And in the recent literatures, people find that even if you reach some all the orders of gradients, you may get uh, so-called hydrodynamic tractor behaviors, which even apply for, you don't need to have these requirements to, for, for the hydrodynamics to be applied. But this is really a hot topic right now to understand why, uh, whether hydrodynamics apply for even smaller systems such as PP collisions, and also mm -hmm. when, when there's no, no, no such link scale separations, and even if it applies, why? And then this is a very hot topic right now in the field, trying to understand, understand this from a theoretical point of view, why this behavior, why, why this is the case. Yeah, okay. But right now we just stick on the classical view of the hydrodynamics. Otherwise there will be another a whole hour to, to talk about the, the recent development on that, on that frontier. Okay, sure. bye, thank you. Shun, we have one more question from Pingal Dasgupa. What is hard and semi-hard hadronization? How are hard and semi-hard hadronization and Cooper-5 formalism working together? Uh, so I haven't talked about that yet. Um, so, so the hard usually means uh, the momentum is high. Um, so, so we talk about, when we talk about hydrodynamics, we usually look at the bulk particles, which are soft in the sense that their momentum is a few times of the average, uh, the mean momentum of the fluid. So it's about like a few GeV up to say two or three GeV. So we mainly, uh, we mainly uh, and will be interested in those. Uh, for the hot particles, you can wait for Friday, so how, how they actually be hadronized in the talk by Draco uh, to do that. So today we're mainly focused on soft particles, which who has a, a lower momentum. Uh, below three GeVs, which we can use Cooper Fry formula to to actually do that. But this will be discussed in the following slides. Hi, before you start going, I just want to say to everybody, in case they're not watching the comments on the Zoom chat, uh, please do not just unmute your microphone and ask a question. Please ask a question first in the Slack space, uh, or even if you cannot do that, maybe in the chat uh, on the Zoom. And then the 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 chairs will stop the speaker and 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 try to get your question answered. We have 140 people. You know, if people just start unmuting and asking questions, it will become mayhem very quickly. So please, again, do not just start asking a question. Ask your question in Zoom. Write it down in the chat, uh, and we will definitely get to it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me go on. So. Uh, so if we want to uh, right now write out these uh, partial differential equations in its uh, simplest form, uh, which is so-called ideal hydrodynamics. Um, so the equation of motion can be simplified by introducing these two uh, derivative objects. So the capital D, which will be uh, the derivative along the flow velocities. So in the local rest frames, you can interpret this capital D as time derivative. And similarly, you can, we can introduce these uh, nabla mules, which actually uh, describe the spatial gradients in the localized frame. Covalently, you can actually write in this form. So with these two operators, you can actually simplify the, um, the partial differential equations shown on the previous slides to the following two equations, where the first equations de describe the evolution, the time evolutions of the energy densities, which essentially is uh, the expansion, the theta here is the expansion rate. So it is basically just saying that the fluid cell expand and also the pressure will actually doing work uh, because of the uh, expansion of the fluid cell. So you will get this continuity equation for the energy density. And then the second equation is tell you the accelerations of the fluid velocity. You can think about this as accelerations, which is driven by the pressure gradients. In the ideal hydrodynamics, uh, you also, we also get the, the equation that uh, tells us that entropy is actually conserved. So the, so the entropy current uh, is, is actually a conserved current in the, in the ideal equation, ideal hydro equations. So, so let me give you a little bit more detailed discussion about this uh, second equation in the equation of motion about the flow velocity accelerations. 
So if we have a, a heavy ion collisions, now one going uh, into the board, one going out, as indicated as these two dash circles. Um, so the energy collisions will happen in these overlapping areas, which is indicated as this uh, uh, almond shape in this, uh, in this area. Chung, then your we, voice we is fading from time to time. Could you really speak okay, closer I'll to the closer, microphone? I'll get closer to the mic, yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll switch. Let me see where the... There's not much more I can do So anyway, so, so for this uh, equation, this is it better? Yes. Sorry. Okay. So so for the for the for the acceleration equations d mu u mu, um, so you can think about the left hand side of the equation as the accelerations of the fluid cells, and is actually controlled by a thermodynamic force on the right hand side, which is the gradient of pressure divide by a combination E plus P, which is can be interpreted as the uh, inertia, a moment of, iner moment of inertia. So these equations can be interpreted as basic as a Newton's second law. And if you solve these equations, uh, uh, and if you solve these equations uh, in through the, using numerical method, you will get the, the evolutions of the five, uh, evolution of the density field on the left-hand side, which is basically driven by these pressure gradients in the space. So what the hydrodynamics do is basically to transform the spatial inhomogeneities in the density field into flow velocities. And then those flow velocity will finally imprint into particles momentum informations in, uh, through, through the particleization procedures, which we will discuss in a little bit uh, later. So using these, uh, these, these kind of pictures, we can actually link uh, uh, the momentum and the measure in the experiments to the spatial inhomogeneity in the, in the inside the collisions. So these types of uh, dynamics is not only happened in the heavy ion collisions, it actually is a universal features for all strong coupling systems. So if, for example, here on the left hand side, I show you a snapshot of the ultra cold lithium atoms as it evolves uh, from a very initial, very anisotropic uh, conf spatial configurations, as you see and see as time progressed, uh, you will see a uh, faster uh, expansions along the transverse direction where the pressure gradient is larger than the, long, uh, than, the, than the vertical directions. So you will see that the transverse expansion is faster than it actually make the, the spatial configurations uh, in to orient to a different uh, orientations. And you can see on the right hand side from the hydrodynamic simulation for QGP, we can see a similar patterns from an almond shape of the fireball initially uh, look like this, and they actually evolve to a different orientations in the later time. So using this, you can see that uh, although uh, these two systems are different, are vastly different, uh, and also the time scale for the evolution is also very different from each other, but the, the collective phenomena uh, between these two systems are very similar to each other. Uh, sharing this, they are both strongly coupled systems uh, in, in, and they described by the fluid dynamic simulations. So now if we want to go one